Hello, uh, my name is uh, Phil Jones. I have the uh, dubious honour of giving the last um, summary of a, uh, of a workshop today. Um, so our workshop was called Understanding and Communicating Quality. Essentially, it was about metrics. Uh, I was one of the facilitators. We also had uh, Mike Taylor, who, uh, like me, comes from digital science. And a special shout-out to uh, Tasha Mellons Cohen of, uh, of Highwire, who stepped in at the last minute to, uh, to be our scribe and to help us organise. I think perhaps you recognise that uh, neither Mike nor I could organise a drinking contest in a brewery, so uh, her help was invaluable. So when we started out thinking about, uh, about metrics, uh, the starting point that we, uh, that, we, that we came from was essentially who were the stakeholders in it. On the left, we have the list that we thought of in preparation for this, researchers, institutions, publishers, funders, and governments and policy organizations. I mean, these are certainly the, uh, the people that I've come across in my uh, work with digital science talking about metrics. Um, but uh, when we started uh, talking to the various uh, members of, the, uh, of our workshop, we discovered that there was a more granular perception, certainly uh, in terms of researchers. Readers and authors were viewed very differently as two very different uh, populations. And then, of course, there's reviewers, who are also researchers, very often. Um, librarians are important to consider, as well as editors and learned societies. Uh, what I think is, is interesting to note that when we got to it in the workshop, we really are looking at kind of the top half of what, what perhaps you can think of as a broader landscape. So maybe that's a result of the fact that we've got you know, mostly publishers and librarians to, to draw on from you know, our, our community here at the conference. So, uh, so perhaps there's a little, bit of, a little bit of bias, a little bit of slant as a result of that. So we started off with this rubric that Mike came up with. And essentially, it reads across the top, as a reader, author, editor, whatever, I want to understand the qualities of, go to the left-hand side, an author, a publisher, a journal, and a peer reviewer. So the idea was to kind of fill it out, and each cell completed that sentence. As an editor, I want to understand blank about a publisher, or as a, as a publisher, I want to understand blank about a researcher. That gave us an awful lot of information in the first workshop or so, and so it was our job as the facilitators to kind of distill that down into some general themes. Three themes emerged from our analysis of that rubric. The first one is reputation. And this, I think, would be fairly obvious because this is the sort of thing that the impact factor was designed to do. Um, it's, it's about uh, citations. It's about, uh, it's about broader social impact. But importantly, there are two components to it. One is external assessment. What does one stakeholder think about another stakeholder? Or what information does one stakeholder need to decide about another stakeholder? And also self-assessment. How am I doing? Am I meeting my goals? Uh, second part, demographics and disciplines. I broke this down into who's reading my stuff, who's making good stuff. These are obvious questions that people need to ask and answer. And then the last part, which says number one again, it should say number three really, shouldn't it? Um, that's mechanical and economic indicators. Now, in order to kind of make sense of this, Mike came up with a, came up with a great uh, analogy, and that was imagine the scholarly supply chain as a Mr. Kipling factory making cherry bakewells. And you want to ask questions like, how much does it cost to make the pastry case? How long does it take to put the cherry on top? So this is questions of speed, efficiency, money, uh, openness, things like that, uh, sampling along the supply chain. To take this to the next level, uh, the next process involved a second uh, rubric, if you like. We gave each of the, we split everybody up into three teams, and we gave each one of those teams a theme. And we asked them to fill in the four quadrants of a sheet of paper. We took one of those flip chart pieces of paper and we gave them a bunch of post-it notes and said, you know, basically fill this thing out for your theme. What is the data that we need to answer this type of quality? Uh, who has that data? Is it public or private? Importantly, there are two components here. There's whether the entity that owns it is public or private and whether the data itself is public or private. And those two are not necessarily the same thing, so it's an important nuance. And lastly, what are the barriers? Why are the reasons why we might not be able to access and analyze this data? Um, oh, there we go. There we go. So this is, uh, this, is the, this is the output 
of that, uh, of that exercise. And as you can see, um, there was a lot of ideas, a lot of post-it notes put on, um, particularly if you look in the reputation section there, um, there's a lot of data out there, as you might imagine. Um, there is a, uh, there's a lot of places where it could be, but also importantly, there's a lot of reasons why we can't use it. So, that's, uh, so it's interesting that it's all kind of proportional along the line. So last slide. So some of the questions that we were looking to answer in terms of the reputation piece is what are the components involved? Who owns and who controls it? Uh, the demographics, what are the populations that are involved in each stage? And the communication process, understanding and communicating that speed. So the, one of the main things that emerge is that data has complex ownership patterns. There are legal issues surrounding that. There are ethical issues which are perhaps the most difficult to solve um, or to accommodate. And there are also technical standards issues. And we've heard a little bit about the work that kind of ORCID and you know, the conference Pitapalooza that took place in November is doing and that sort of thing to try and look at some of those standards issues. Um, the big thing from reputation probably has the richest and most complex data, but like I say, the most barriers as well. Um, demographics is probably the hardest to categorize and work on. There's very little publicly available data, but there's a lot of data owned by you know, publishers who've you know, got demographic data on their, own, um, on their own content, who's reading and who's producing and that sort of thing. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of data available, but lots of it is proprietary. And then the process is probably one of the things that librarians and researchers and even funders want to know the most about, but there's probably it's the most difficult to get at. So we've started thinking about, um, and this is work that will continue on, is there a way to get at that? Is there a way to crowdsource how long it takes a publication to be, you know, to be produced? How long a review process takes? Is there a way of kind of building that metrics and data set? Like I say, this is not the end of this project. Um, certainly Mike and I are going to continue to, to think about it and work on, about it, and we're going to reach out to the members of the, uh, of the workshop and see who else wants to be involved in kind of taking this to the next level. Thank you very much. Uh, do I sit